magandang magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Si Pastor Radetsch po ulit ito. Welcome sa ating midday refreshment from God's Word. And today is September 17. Ito po yung unang araw na diretso na po tayo sa ating YouTube channel. Hindi ko na po ito ipapasa sa ating WhatsApp groups. So every single day from now on po ay diretso na po tayo sa YouTube para hindi na po mapuno yung inyong mga telepono. Dahil i-click nyo lang po yung link and then you'll go straight to our YouTube channel. So, today po ay pag-uusapan natin ang mga sekreto ni David kung papaano niyang natalo si Goliath. Pero bago po yun ay tulad po ng lagi natin ginagawa, hilingin natin ang tulong ng Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Napatuloy niyo kaming tinuturuan by the grace and power of the Holy Spirit. And once again, Lord, sa araw na ito, hihingi po kami, Panginoon, na inyong pabor. Turuan niyo po kami, paliwanagan niyo po kami, Panginoon. And we pray na mabuksan ang aming mga kaisipan upang ay inyong salita ay maging napakadaling makapasok sa aming puso't isip. Lord, we thank you even right now at ibabalik na namin sa inyo ang lahat ng kapurihan dahil alam namin ang Holy Spirit po ang magtuturo at sasama sa amin. Salamat po Ama sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So we will talk about David's secrets in defeating Goliath. Or papaano niya na natalo si Goliath? Papaano niya ito natumba, napatumba? And eventually, napugutan po niya ito ng ulo. What were the reasons for his boldness against Goliath? And where did he get his courage? What made him so brave and so confident na kahit po siya ay napakabata and he wasn't even conscripted yet sa army of Israel. Hindi pa po siya pinasama sa hukbong sandatahan ng Israel, siya po'y meron ng ganung uri ng katapangan. What was his secret or, or what were his secrets? Si Goliath po ay nagre-represent ng pinakamalaking um, enemy ng Israel. Nire-represent po niya ang Philistine at ang Philistine po during those years, during those times, ito po ang masasabi nating one of the biggest, one of the most difficult to defeat na kalaban ng Israel. And sa ancient warfare po, ay meron pong tinatawag na single combat. Single combat na, which means that, you know, two warring or two fighting forces could send its best man onto a field and these two men would fight it off person to person face to face but then in this story we would right away see na dehado po disadvantaged masyado si David um kilalanin po muna natin si David po ay bunsong anak ni Jesse walo po silang magkakapatid na lalaki and being the bunso siya po ang nagbabantay ng mga sheep And he had three brothers who were fighting for the army of Israel na nandoon nga po sa labanan. At siya po ay isang araw, inutusan ng daddy niya na magdala ng food para sa kanyang brothers. Pero yung naratnan po niya doon sa labanan, sa battlefield, inabutan niya na mayroong isang lalaki yung pong tinatawag na pinakamahusay, the champion of Philistine, pinakamahusay na mandirigma ng Philistine, na ang pangalan ay Goliath. And this man was more than nine feet tall, at siya po'y talagang outfitted na panggera, talagang, talagang nakasuot siyang panggera. He looked so terrifying, he sounded so terrifying, and people were just so scared. People were just so, uh, uh, parang, parang nawawalan sila ng, ng ganang lumaban. They were just, well, flat out. They just wanted to run away from Goliath. Now, let's take a look at 1 Samuel 17. Um, having given you a, a little bit of a background, diretso po tayo sa 1 Samuel 17. Um, 
verse, mula verse 8, from verse 8. And this is the time na nagsasalita po si Goliath. Sabi niya, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you, the servants of Saul, choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. Sabi niya, nilalang po niya, minamaliit niya na kayo ay mga servants lang ni, ni Saul, ni Saul. Ako ay, ako ay Filisteo. He took pride in, in his being a Philistine because he, he thought na talagang powerful sila, mga matatapang sila. And he was looking at King Saul as a wimp, you know, a very weak king. And he taunted, he mocked the nation of Israel. Sabi niya, choose a man for yourselves. Let him come down to me. So, naghahanap po siya ng face-to-face na single combat. Gusto niyang maghagit, gusto niyang magyaya ng labanan. Yung pinakamainam ninyong mandirigma, iharap niyo sa akin. Sabi niya sa verse 9, If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Verse 10. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Inulit na naman niya, give me a man, sabi niya. So verse 8, sinabi na niya, mamili kayo ng taong ipapalaban sa akin. So verse 10, inulit na naman niya, give me a man that we may fight together. Verse 11, when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, yung words nga po ni Goliath, they were dismayed. Nanlumo po sila. They felt so so weak. They, they were just so discouraged. And they were greatly afraid, sabi ng verse 11, 1 Samuel 17. They were greatly afraid. They were just so terrorized. This guy who was nine feet tall was looking for someone to fight with face-to-face, single combat. And they couldn't give him anybody because everybody was so scared, so terrified. Verse 16, and the Philistine draw. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening. So this went on po, mga friends. This went on for 40 days. Walang tigil. He kept on mocking, taunting, insulting the nation of Israel. At this point po, ito na po, dumarating na po si David. Para po siyang grab delivery. <laughs> Food panda po siya nung... Panahon na ito, food panda, delivery boy. So, andun po siya sa battlefield, dala yung food for his brothers. Then as he was talking with his brothers, there was this champion, verse 23, 1 Samuel 17, there was this guy, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, pangalan niya Goliath, coming up from the armies of the Philistines in this guy again said the same words that he said initially. He again called for someone to fight with him from the troops of Israel. And David heard his words. David heard him. And David witnessed that all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. They ran away. They were just so scared. They had to flee from the presence of this giant of a man called Goliath. And David looked at everything and he was kind of surprised that this was happening. Verse 26, 1 Samuel 17. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Nagtanong-tanong siya, sabi niya, ano ba ang premyo? Siguro po nagulat siya na wala pong lumalaban, wala pong nag-raise ng hand na, King Saul, send me before the presence of Goliath, send me to fight. Wala pong ganun, no? So nagtanong si David, dahil siguro nga nagugulat siya, but walang nagbo-volunteer. What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach? Sino daw, ano daw ang gagawin sa taong makikipaglaban dito sa Filisteyong ito? 
upang matanggal ang kahihiyan ng Israel. Because for David, in his eyes, Israel was being insulted. And hindi niya ito matake, parang iniinsulto na ang Israel. And then sinabi niya, at ako po'y natuwa talaga po dito sa portion na ito, 1 Samuel 17.26 For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Sino itong hindi tuli na Filisteo na lalabanan niya ang hukbo ng Diyos na buhay? Wow, talagang nagsasalita po ang isang kabataan with all his passion. And all of a sudden, yung kanya pong oldest brother, si Eliab, nagsalita. Galit. Verse 28, 1 Samuel 17, sabi ni Eliab, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. Sabi nung panganay niyang kuya, Ba't ka ba nagpunta dito? At kanino mo iniwan? Yung iilan na mga tupa doon sa ilang, doon sa forest. Kilala kita, mayabang ka. Mayabang ka at ikaw eh nagmamarunong, nagmamalaki. The insolence of your heart, I know, sabi niya. For you have come down to see the battle. Gusto mo lang manood. Gusto mo lang makiusyoso sa gera. And the oldest brother of David really had no idea how serious David was. At ang nasa isip niya, itong batang ito, wala namang ibang karanasan ito kundi magbantay lang doon sa iilan na tupa. And he had to mention, kailangan talagang banggitin ni Eliab, nasaan sinong iniwanan mo ng mga iilan, kakaunting tupa, na parang sinasabi niya na, ang karanasan mo magbantay lang ng kakaunting tupa. Yun lang ang kakayahan mo. Mayabang kang bata ka. Ni hindi pa nga marami yung binabantayan mo. Buti sana kung maraming marami kang binabantayan na tupa, masasabi pa na marami kang karanasan sa buhay. Pero iilan lang yun at kanino mo ba iniwan yun? Sagot ni David verse 29, 1 Samuel 17. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Sabi niya, ano bang nagawa ko? Wala bang dahilan? Wala ba kayo nakikitang rason para magalit kayo dito sa taong ito? na nilalabanan, ina, ina, inaalipusta, tinu, tinutuya ang pangalan ng Diyos na buhay? Hindi man lang ba kayo natinag? Parang ganun po ang ibig niya sabihin. Ano po? Sabi niya, is there not a cause? Wala bang dahilan? Ano bang nagawa ko? Mali ba ito? Mali ba itong ginawa ko? What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Wala ba kayo nakitang dahilan para kayo ay magkaroon man lang ng divine indignation at yung, indi- yung divine indignation ninyo ay magkaroon man lang kayo ng, ng action, magkaroon man lang kayo ng inyong gagawin para dito sa Filisteo na ito na humahamak, hinahamak niya, iniinsulto niya ang pangalan ng Diyos na buhay. Is there not a cause? What have I done now? Verse 30, Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. So ang ginawa ni David, Bumaling siya sa ibang tao. At yun din na sinabi niya, Is there not a cause? Wala ba kayo nakitang dahilan o rason para tayo po ay magkaroon man lang ng, ng uh, idea na, na labanan itong taong ito, itong taong ito na, na inaalipusta niya, iniinsulto niya ang pangalan ng Diyos. And these people answered him as the first ones did. Ku ano yung mga sinabi ng mga nauna niyang kinausap, ganun din ang sinabi. And of course po, ito pong commotion po na ito, nakarating po kay Haring Saul. Narinig niya na yung mga kapatid din na Eliab na naghatid lamang po ng food sa kanyang mga kuya, ay ganito ang sinasabi. So, si Saul siguro po nasa point of desperation because wala naman po siyang ibang taong nakita na mag-volunteer to fight Goliath. Pinatawag niya. He called for David. He called for him so he would know the, the real intentions of David. And then so verse 33 po, now 1 Samuel chapter 17, Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Ikaw ay kabataan pa lang. Lalabanan mo itong taong ito na mandirigma na mula pa sa kanyang kabataan. 
So, kinontrast po ni Saul, ikaw ay kabataan. Pero itong taong ito, mandirigma na mula pa sa kanyang kabataan. It was as if Saul was telling David, Bata ka pa! Samantalang itong lalabanan mo, mula pa nung siya'y bata pa, mandirigma na anong laban mo sa kanya. But for me, it was it was nicer than what David's brother Eliab said. Because at least Saul was a bit reasonable. Na naisip niya na, well, sa mata ng tao, ikaw ay bata pa lang. And itong mamang ito, itong si Goliath, ay tumanda na sa pagiging mandirigma. Papunta ka pa lang si Goliath, pabalik na. And David's bold reply really warmed my heart. 1 Samuel 17 verse 34 hanggang 37, sabi po ni David, Your servant, tinutukoy niya sarili niya, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant, referring to himself, David, your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Wow, ang tapang po ni David. Talaga pong galak na galak po ang heart ko. Pag binabasa ko po ito, sabi niya, This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, will be just like the lion and the bear that I slew. Parang yun na sinasabi niya. Pumatay ako ng leon, pumatay ako ng bear. Ganito din ang mangyayari dito sa tu, hindi tuli na Filisteyong ito. Dahil nga sa ito ay lumalaban, kinakalaban niya, iniinsulto niya ang hug, hukbo ng Diyos na buhay. And then verse 17, sabi ulit ni David, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Wow! Ilang libong tao doon po sa troops of Israel at nandoon po si Haring Saul. Hindi po nagsalita ng ganito. Now the Lord who delivered me from this and that will deliver us from the head of this crazy man, Goliath. Wala pong ganun. Itong batang inutusan lang ng daddy niya na mag, mag food panda delivery, mag grab delivery ng food. Pagdating doon na nakita niya na may umiinsulto sa pangalan ng Diyos na sinasamba niya, ng Diyos na inaawitan niya, na Diyos na sinasamba niya, pag nag-iisa siya, nagbabantay siya sa mga tupa, na nakikipagniig siya sa Lord, itong Diyos na ito ay, ay naririnig niyang ininsulto at hindi siya makatiis nang wala siyang gagawin. Hindi siya makatiis na hindi ipagtanggol ang pangalan ng buhay na Diyos. Hallelujah. So si Saul po, dahil hindi naman po siya ganun ang pananaw, katulad kay David, Nandun pa rin po siya doon sa human level. Tulad nung sinabi niya kanina na, anak, bata ka pa eh, itong, itong mamang ito. Mula pagkabata hanggang ngayon, tumanda na. Mandirigma na, baka kumapaano ka. Sa so verse 38, umandar ulit po yung pagiging human being lamang ni King Saul. At sabi po niya sa so verse 38, sabi po ng verse 38, dinamitan niya si, si David with his coat of armor, yung kanya pong baluti ng, na, na, ng, ng panlaban, yung pong panggera na kasuotan at saka yung bronze helmet inilagay sa ulo ni David at yung kanya pong uh, coat of mail, yun pong lahat uh, basta yung lahat po ng, ng get up na panggera inilagay niya kay David pero si David po because he was moving in the spiritual realm he saw God beyond human understanding. He was envisioning God in a way that only his spiritual eyes could appreciate. Sabi ni David, I cannot walk with these. Sabi niya sa verse 39. Sinubukan niya. Naglakad siya. Sinubukan niya. Tinest niya naman din. Pero sabi niya, I cannot walk with these for I have not tested them. Hindi ko pa sila nasubukan. I have not tested them. Hindi ko pa siya naranasan. Hindi ko pa siya na subukan. Praise the Lord. Kung ano po yung nasubukan ni David, 
Yun po ang kaniyang mas pinagkakatiwalaan. Praise the Lord! So ito pong pangyayaring ito ay nauwi doon sa si David ay walang sinuot na panggera at ang kaniyang tanging tools or panlaban, ammunition, yung kanya pong arms ay isang sling po at limang bato. Yun lang po ang kanya pong dinala sa harapan ni Goliath. At nung siya po'y kaharap na po ni Goliath, verse 23, uh, 1 Samuel 17, sabi po dito, So Goliath said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine, talking about Goliath, and Goliath cursed David by his gods. And the, and the Philistine, Goliath, said to David, Come to me! And I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Halika rito, sabi niya, maglaban tayo at ibibigay ko ang iyong, ang iyong katawan, ang iyong laman sa mga ibon at sa mga, uh, mga hayop, mga, mga beasts of the field. Pero alam niyo po ba, umatras po ba si David? Hindi. Hindi po siya umatras at ang sabi niya kay Goliath, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all the assembly, this assembly, shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. In short po, my friends, David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. He killed him, But because there was no sword in his hand, he ran and stood over the Philistine and took the sword of the Philistine, took the sword of, of Goliath and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head. Kasi yun ang sinabi ni David eh. Doon sa pasimula pa lang ng kanila pong inkwentro, sinabi niya, pupugutan kita ng ulo at ginawa po niya ang kanya pong pangako. Pupugutan niya ng ulo ang kalaban niya. Alam niyo po maraming storya na po naririnig natin tungkol kay David and Goliath. Minsan po, lalo na po sa Christian circles, kapag meron kang na, nahaharap na problema, napakalaki, minsan ginagamit po yung term or yung description na Goliath to describe something very huge, something very big. Kung meron kang challenges or trials sa buhay na para bang imposible, minsan ginagamitan natin ng description Goliath. Yan ang Goliath mo. Nagiging adjective na po yung noun na Goliath. Parang isang bagay na napakahirap talunin. Pero si David po, yun na nga, natalo po niya si Goliath. At ano po ba ang mga sekreto ni David? Number one, David knew Israel's relationship with God. He knew, he was aware, he was confident He rested na mahinga siya doon sa kaisipan na yun, na mahinga siya doon sa katotohanan na yun na ang Israel ay may relasyon sa Panginoon. Sabi niya doon sa verse 26, 1 Samuel 17, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Sino itong Filisteong hindi tuli? Dahil noong unang panahon po, ang mga Israelita po sa pamamagitan ni Abraham ay nakipag kasundo po sa Lord, sa Diyos na buhay. Nagkaroon po sila ng agreement na tinatawag pong covenant. Sa mga hindi po nakakaintindi ng word na covenant, ang covenant po ay agreement, kasunduan. The people of Israel had a covenant or an agreement, a relationship with the living God. And it was formalized by the act of circumcision. It was finalized and formalized by the act of circumcision. Kaya nung sinabi ni David, 
Sino itong hindi tuli na Filisteo para niyang sinabi? Itong Filisteo na walang koneksyon sa Diyos na buhay? Itong Filisteo na walang, walang relasyon sa Diyos na buhay? Wala itong magagawa dahil wala sa kanya ang suporta, wala sa kanya ang backup ng Diyos na buhay na may gawa ng langit at lupa. Hallelujah! Praise God. He was confident because he knew his standing. He knew where he was standing with God. He knew what Israel was in the sight of God. Dahil doon po sa Genesis 17, 9 hanggang 11, ang Diyos po ay nakipag-ugnay kay Abraham at sinabi po ng Diyos kay Abraham doon sa Genesis 17, 9 to 11, As for you, you shall keep my covenant. You shall keep my agreement with you, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. At ang covenant po na iniwanan ng Diyos kay Abraham, lalo na po uh, sa, mga, sa mga karugtong na hinerasyon mula kay Abraham, sinabihan po niya si Abraham, I, I will make you a great nation. Doon po sa Genesis, as early as Genesis chapter 12, sinabi na po ng Diyos na buhay kay Abraham, I will make you a great nation, I will bless you, I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing to a lot to, to, to nations, I will bless those who bless you, I will curse those who curse you, and in, your, and, and in you all families of the earth shall be blessed. David knew the relationship of Israel with this God, And this relationship was finalized or formalized by the circumcision of every male child, every male Israelite. So when he said, Sino itong hindi circumcised na Philistine? Ang ibig niyang sabihin, wala kang relasyon sa Diyos, wala kang connection sa Diyos, hindi ka poprotektahan ng Diyos. That was number one. He knew he had a relationship with God. He knew his standing with God. Number two, David bore in mind, he knew how God blessed him previously. He knew how to count his blessings. Marunong siyang magbilang ang kanyang mga pagpapala doon po sa, sa 1 Samuel 17.37. Sabi niya kay, kay Saul, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, mula daw sa mga kamay ng leon at ng, ng oso, ng bear, He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. Nasubukan na po niya ang Diyos at alam niyang tapat ang Diyos. Alam po niya na hindi nagbabago ang Diyos kahapon, ngayon at man. Sabi ng Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you are not consumed, you are not defeated, O sons of Jacob, because I am the Lord, I, I do not change. Alam ni David na ang Diyos na kanyang sinasamba at pinapanampalatayanan ay kaya siyang iligtas once again. Kung papaano siya iniligtas noon, ililigtas siyang muli ngayon. Kaya nga nung pinasuot siya ni, ni, ni Saul ng, ng baluti ng pag, pag, pa, pa, sa, sa labanan, yung pong, yung pong uh, coat of armor, yung pong panggera. Sinabi niya, I would not wear this because I have not tested this. Verse 39, 1 Samuel 17. Hindi ko to isusuot kasi hindi ko pa ito nasubukan. Hallelujah. Di po ba naisip? May mga bagay po tayong nasubukan na patungkol sa kabutihan ng Diyos. Kapag may kaharap ka na anumang uri ng pagsubok, balikan mo ang napakaraming pagkakataon na tinugon ng Lord ang panalangin mo. Balikan mo ang maraming instances na pinagaling ka ng Lord, tinugon ng Lord ang inyong pangangailangan. Balikan mo ang mga mga areas of your life na nakakakitaan mo ng katapatan ng Diyos at yun ang baunin mo sa current situation mo kung saan may kaharap ka na namang bagong problema. At katulad ni David, kapag hindi mo pa nasubukan, wag mong gamitin, wag mong asahan. Sabi niya doon kay Saul, nung pinasuot siya, noong, noong armor, na no, yung pong damit nga po ng panggera, hindi ko po alam kung anong Tagalog niya eh, yung damit na panggera, hindi niya gustong gamitin because I have not tested. Hindi ko pa ito nasubukan. Hindi ko pa ito na-prove. Pero ang Diyos na buhay, na-prove ko na. He who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And number three po, kaya po siya nanalo kay David because his 
motive was to glorify God. Verse 46. Sabi niya kay, kay Goliath, Sa araw na ito, ibibigay ka ng Diyos sa akin. I will strike you and take your head from you. And sa araw na ito, I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines ang mga katawang patay ng iyong mga kasamahang Pilisteo. Ang mga katawan ninyo ay ipapakain ko sa mga ibon at sa mga mga wild beasts that all the earth verse 46 for Samuel 17 that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's praise God so ano po ang mga secrets po para matalo natin ating mga Goliath? Marami pong mga problema. Marami pa. Bring it on! Dahil mayroon pong secrets na mapupulot natin sa buhay ni Goliath na pwede natin gamitin ngayon upang tayo rin po ay mananagumpay. Number one, ulitin ko lang po, number one, tayo po ay may relasyon sa Lord. Di po ba? Kung tayo po ay may relasyon sa Panginoon, Babakapan po tayo ng Panginoon. Paano ba tayo magkakaroon ng relasyon sa Panginoon? Sabi ng John 1.12, tanggapin natin ang Panginoong Yesus sa ating buhay. Bibigyan niya tayo ng karapatan na maging anak ng Diyos. Number two, tandaan natin. Alalahanin natin ang mga nakaraang pagpapala at patuloy nating asahan na siya ay nananatiling tapat. Hindi siya nagbabago kahapon ngayon at magpakailanman. Hebrews 13.8 Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. At number three, kung ang ating motibo sa ating pamumuhay ay ibigay ang kaluwalhatian sa Panginoon, sigurado po ang katagumpayan. Katulad ni David, ang kanyang layunin, tanggalin ang kahihiyan ng Israel to remove the reproach of Israel at ipaalam sa buong mundo that there is God in Israel. Kung ang layunin mo, ay ipaalam sa mga nakakakilala sa iyo, sa mga nakapaligid sa iyo, na nasa iyo ang Diyos na buhay, na may gawa ng langit at lupa. Hindi kanya iiwanan, hindi kanya pababayaan. Praise God. Let us pray. Lord, salamat sa paalala na meron kaming pupwedeng gawin upang mananagumpay kami sa buhay. Lord, aasa kami sa aming relasyon sa iyo dahil alam namin hindi mo pababayaan ang mga taong umaasa sa iyo. Pangalawa, Panginoon, Lord, tatandaan namin lagi ang inyong katapatan mula pa noon hanggang ngayon. Na alam ko, Panginoon, alam namin, Panginoon, kung ano kayo nag- nagpala sa amin noon, ganun pa rin kayo ngayon magpapala sa amin hanggang ngayon. And Lord, tatandaan din namin, Panginoon, ang bawat pagay na aming gagawin ay dapat naming ipagkaloob para sa iyong ka- kaluwalhatian. At Lord God, Kapag ang bagay na ito, lahat ng aming pangarap, lahat ng aming panalangin, ay for your glory, tiyak Panginoon, ibibigay mo sa amin ang katagumpayan. Salamat po Ama dahil alam namin Lord, you are always on our side. Salamat po Panginoon, i-bless niyo po ang lahat na may karamdaman, pagalingin niyo po, lahat po na may hinihingi na financial breakthrough. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name na patuloy Panginoon na kayo Panginoon ang ang tumulong sa kanila magbigay ng wisdom papaano nila ayusin Lord God ang kanila pong mga uh, situations. And Father, sino man po ang nangangailangan ng bagong trabaho or nangangailangan ng promotion or nangangailangan ng bagong hanap buhay. Lord, lalo na ang mga nasa Pilipinas na nakikinig nito, pagpalain niyo po sila, Panginoon. Siksikliglig, umaapaw, ibalik niyo sa kanila ang kanilang mga ibinibigay, ang, ang kanila pong mga pagsishare sa kanila mga kamag-anakan, sa mga kapitbahay. Tuwing meron silang natatanggap na ayuda, hindi nila sinasarili. Lord, pagpalain mo sila at hayaan mo na maranasan nila, Panginoon. Ikaw ay Diyos na hindi natutulog, Diyos na hindi nag-day off, Diyos na alam ninyo kung ano ang nararapat para sa bawat pamilya. Salamat po Ama, indeed you are good. We give you back all the praise, all the glory, all the thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. God bless you po. Ito po si Pastor Redej. I will keep you in my thoughts. I'll keep you in my prayers. I will keep you in my heart. Ulitin ko po, from today po, July, I'm sorry, September 17. Diretso na po tayo sa ating YouTube channel. I won't be disseminating or forwarding any WhatsApp file 
ng atin pong midday refreshment. God bless you po! Thank you.